Hi, Miss. Hello, Miss V and Mr. Eric, my love. Hi, Mama. How are you? Doing fine. Hope everybody had a good Memorial Day weekend. Of course, this will be posted a lot, probably almost by next Memorial Day. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. So let me see. I want y'all to uh, write down veronicadrake.com in case y'all don't wait to the very end where I post it, but I will also put it in the description box. So, Eric, is there any way you can get uh, Sylvia Brown in here, please? I didn't know much about her until kind of recently. So, just going to take a minute because Eric and I had had a meeting last night. A meeting last night. Oh boy! Uh, we have our orders. He and I. Ah. So this, he brings in this energy. She has a very big, grand entrance, like just larger than uh, life. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here she is. Hello, Sylvia, or Miss Brown, I should say. How are you? She says, call me Sylvia. All right, thank you. You can call me Elisa. So look, a lot of the Channeling Eric peeps really are just fascinated by you and your story and, and your past, etc. cetera. Uh, so I'm just going to start reading their questions, unless you want to start out saying anything about yourself. Eric, Eric says that she's here for us and she agrees and she's very willing to be forthright and to be um, very helpful in ways that maybe she couldn't have been while she was here on earth. All right, well, let's start out by saying who you are and what's your claim to fame uh, was here on earth. Mm -hmm. She says that she... Uh, her legacy is that of a psychic medium. She has roots that come from generations in her family. Oh. She knew early on what a psychic medium was, and um, that's what her claim to fame is, she says. That is cool. All right, so, um, so you had this thing with something about Nostradamus, um, I know that you and Nostradamus, this person asked, had a very special connection. Are you still hanging out with him on the other side? Or do you want to talk about your relationship with Nost Nostradamus? She said it isn't as um, exciting or as unusual as one might think where she is. She meets a lot of people on the other side. And she says that he is definitely one of her favorite. But she says since she's transitioned, there have been a lot of mentors, she calls them. Oh, that's great. Now, you were very prolific, I think, in, in, uh, as an author. Uh, now that you're on that side, is there anything that you would change in those books at all? Or in, yeah, would you start out with that? She says that she stands by what she stood for here on earth. And she says that she would give more attention to the idea that people need to respect this process. She would put boundaries around it. She might reframe it in such a way that people understood this wasn't a carnival act or a sideshow yeah. act, she said. Um, she's also saying that people need this and to treat it as such. She would have been more in alignment with that message. Do you, are you saying that you did make it uh, more uh, spectacular and um, what you call it? Uh, you know, just trying to evoke emotions in people. Sensationalistic, that's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. She says it was her natural character that she was just, she's using the word flamboyant. Okay. It was just my natural character. I was never the person that walked in the room and just blended in, 
she said, and she's also saying that no matter what the presentation was, there were always going to be people on the opposite side that wanted something different. Of course. She's saying overall, I wouldn't have really done anything differently. Okay. Were you more of a psychic or more of a medium? She's saying that she knew early on that she was psychic and it was later in life that she knew she was a medium. So she says it's very hard to explain to somebody how to differentiate because in her life, it was just the norm. She was raised with it and so she never really gave a lot of thought to it. Okay. Um, all right, so do you have any big, like three big predictions for the next 12 months, say? She's, she's her, her and Eric are chuckling. Um, she says, because predictions can be a slippery slope. I know. <laughs> yeah, you can talk about that too. Because, you know, not everything that psychics say come true. And obviously, I'm, I'm, I'd love for you to explain that. If you, you want to do that first, explain why it's not, you know. As she said, said, let's set the framework. Yes, let's do She wants to say that as a human, when she was here on earth, you were, there were flaws. You are human, there are flaws. And she's, she's very transparent about saying one of her flaws was not acknowledging outright that there were, were times when she should have been more sympathetic she should have been more empathetic and she probably should have been a translator that showed mercy to the people that she was reading okay now okay. why she's saying that she says is because as someone who does this work and being human yeah. we can get our wires crossed and what we think we're feeling hearing knowing can be translated just like when you translate italian to english or spanish to english or vice versa something gets lost in the translation she said the same was true is true, she's correcting me, the same is true for everybody that does this work. Yeah. Um, she's saying that there are days, she's admitting that she got caught up in ego. Oh, okay. The ego, the human ego will take you places where you lose touch with reality and this is definitely something that I had happened to me. She said, it's almost impossible at my level of notoriety to not have that come in. She said, if I'm guilty, if I'm guilty of anything, she says, it's not being able to navigate and manage my own ego. Yeah. So do you feel looking back that you did anything that you regretted that was, that was my charlatan like? Knowingly, I mean. Um, she says that's the distinguishing word, knowing. Oh, okay. Go ahead and talk about because that. Because never ever would I have, would I have, you know, ethically, it wasn't in my makeup to, to be uh, deceitful or deceptive or good. to hurt people. Good, good. All right, so... Um, so free will, too, I mean, it changes predictions, right? I mean, when you make a prediction, that's where that quantum probability is headed for, right? To that reality. But something else happens, and that quantum 
that sort of that thread dies off and then another one is created. You want to talk about that? Is that true? That makes it very difficult. Mm -hmm. She says, again, she's reiterating, predictions are a very slippery slope. And yes, that is one of the reasons. The other reason is this. When a prediction is put forward, it is adopted by the collective. Mm. And the collective can either feel empowered or disempowered by it. And so as the energy goes out, so the creation is born. So there will be people that will say, you know, naysayers, they have a stronger, you know, and that shifts the energy of the collective, which means the prediction could shift. So, yeah. Yeah. so if you said that you predicted um, uh, a volcano, whatever, and everybody believed it, then, you know, thought creates reality. I mean, so that, mm -hmm. that just supports that. Exactly, yes. Also. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so mm -hmm. do you want to share? Oh, yeah, let's talk about the fact that you, in, in one of your books, you um, sort of predicted the coronavirus, right? You want to talk about that? And that it would come very quickly and leave very quickly. She says that's one of the many predictions that I made that I got a lot of flack for. Really? She says that there are people in both camps, people who will believe it and people who won't. She says you can make a case for both. She said, I know that I saw the pandemic, she's calling it. I know that I saw the downfall of life as we knew it, mm. health-wise. She said, I know what I know. And she's saying that I can't make people believe it. I just know what I know. And she's saying that there's no such thing as time. And so it comes quick and it goes quick. Yeah. Quick is a relative term. You know, if you're suffering from it or you've lost someone, she said, it's never going to seem quick. Yeah. But the truth is, in the overall, it'll be a very quick in and out. Okay. Uh, you know, some people uh, said that you copied the whole coronavirus thing um, in your end of days book from the Eyes of Darkness by author Dean Koontz. I don't think that's true. Is it? You didn't copy that. You really had, maybe he had the site too. I mean, you know. She says, you know, it's people, there are lots of, of critics out there, Monday morning quarterbacks. Yeah. She said, I am not standing here before you saying I didn't have faults. But one of the things that I am adamant about is I never plagiarized. I never took someone else's thoughts, words, and made them my own. We could put it to rest. You had ethics. You had an ego that was flamed by your fame, and you know, you, you deserve that, but you know. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so do you want to share some predictions? She wanted to say something else. She's sure. saying that when you are as public and as famous as I was, and you don't act accordingly to people's expectations, patients mm, yeah. and they think you should have done it differently you're always going to be made the bad guy well i know uh, miss v and i know once you get out in the limelight yeah. people are attacked on all sides and they have way too many expectations they gotta forget you're human you know so that's not good so, and i think that's what you suffered from mm -hmm. right? Yes, and she said that never once did she put a prediction out or never once did she do a reading with any malice involved. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. She had too much respect for herself and for the people she was reading. Sure. So let's go start with the predictions. Let's start with a, one that, I, and you can pick the rest, okay? Um, mm -hmm. Coronavirus, what do you see with that all, all in all? I mean, everything, what's going to happen to China, you know, 
what if it's like what anything anything that you think we should know mm -hmm. she says that definitely this virus um was here for a very spiritual reason it was here to teach us spiritually and each and every one of us will take away a different lesson from it. She's also saying that this virus came in to let nature catch its breath mm. because of this overabundance of human population. Mm -hmm. You know, as we, as we, the humans, stayed home, you know, she's saying, we, the humans, she's talking mm -hmm. in the present tense. Uh, as we, the humans, stayed home, the animals got to prosper and come back. She's also saying that what appears to be the fix, mm -hmm. the cure, she says, just won't be completely what it should be until mid-2021 or even the later part of 2021. She says, be careful of fraudulent uh, what's the word? Fixes, I think. The fraudulent fixes, like the, like fraudulent the, cures. Like vaccines? That, that we're yeah, I mean, I guess that's what she's saying. She's saying fraudulent fixes, fraudulent cures. She's saying there will absolutely be a cure, a fix, a vaccine. She said, but not anytime soon. And if they... So she's saying there is already something here that will help with this and people are turning a blind eye to it because it doesn't produce money uh, okay what is it is it a vaccine a pill uh... um she's saying it's a pill that treats other symptoms okay other diseases hydrochloroquine okay but they said that the what do you say about the fact that they say that I mean, hydrochloroquine, hydroxychloroquine has been around forever. I mean, not forever, but, and all of a sudden they're saying, I can't, I don't, COVID people are dying, have an increased mortality rate on it, but I don't know, you know, the, the mortality figures are hard to judge because somebody goes to the hospital, they have a heart attack, but they test positive COVID, all of a sudden they're coded as a COVID death. So they, so that the hospital can get more money basically. So, and then also, I don't know, it's, it's such a mess. Okay, go ahead. So I, I can't, I honestly, I feel um, confused about what she's saying with that. And I, I feel like it, honestly, it, for, it's probably me, but the transmission feels almost like choppy kind of like, so the drug is beneficial. So there's some drug used the now, but it might not be hydroxychloroquine. It, yes, it might not be. And it's beneficial only in certain conditions and uh -huh. only with certain people. And it is not the end all be all. It is not the fix. Okay. The fix is not out there yet. Is the fix a vaccine? Yes. It, yes, it creates resistance to the virus in the body. Is it the one that uh, where insects are built uh, are making coronavirus proteins that can then be injected? Is it that one or or, or another one? We won't pin it down on yeah. that because it's too difficult. Yeah, no. She said it's not. It's not there yet. We're not oh, there okay. yet. Oh, oh she my. does say the light. Something about the light and the virus. Oh, I, uh, like ultraviolet light. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, will RUBC? Yeah, will slow it down. Will kill it. She says that there are going to be things that are going to come out that have come out. Sorry, that have come out that will be retracted, and you're going to oh. see more and more of that. She said until basically we understand. Yes, this is a pandemic, but we we overreacted. Oh, tell me about it. I think what we could have done is just quarantine anybody 65 and up and let children go out there and, and give us the herd immunity that, you know, that we well, her words, 
her words, we overreacted. So don't yeah. send me emails. No, 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 no. I know. I know. All right, so um, what other prediction? Um, she says the sway, she's calling it the sway in the economy. Okay. <laughs> um, there's no way that this economy is not going to come back by the end of the year. Okay. She says people need to slow down and they need to catch their breath and stop panicking because we are all in the same boat. Now, it's interesting to me because she's referring to herself. I'm saying it word oh, for word. Like yeah. She's calling it we as if she's here. This and that a, makes me, this is a side. Yeah. This makes me wonder if she's reincarnated. Oh, well, let's ask that. Or if you're just really still connected to your humanness. Yeah, I'm interested. Yeah, um, <laughs> she, she says, once a human, always a human. Oh. Um, she's in fact saying that she is not walking on the earth at this time, okay. but she likes to use the word we so that she un we understand that we're all one and that she's included in this. Yeah. So um, the panic that I see it's, it's overreaction. It just makes makes the reality even stronger. It creates collective panic, makes this whole pandemic just stick more. But uh, you don't have to comment on that. Any other non coronavirus? Um, maybe a couple of other predictions. That she feels Which, certain, fairly certain about. We know that that's not etched in stone, of course. In what way, in what area? Because her and Eric are like asking, what do people want to know about? Oh, oh well, uh, what about, somebody asked, uh, does she, see, is, it, uh, do, are we going to have a solar flash, whatever that is? It doesn't resonate. They're not, they're not feeling okay. that. Like we're not, okay. So let me listen to what they say. It's just going to take me a minute here to get, I do want to know what's going to happen with China, but go ahead. Oh, okay. So let's go with five that. Years, uh, okay. Let's go with that. The Chinese people, the Chinese Communist Party. She predicts, and Eric um, is standing here in all of this too, um, there will be a downfall of the communist regime in China. Now, She's saying it won't be one swoosh and it's over. Mm -hmm. She says it will be chipped away. The people will be empowered. It's almost like she's saying there will be a segment of China that is invaded and gets its legs underneath it and takes on the government. Well, invaded by whom? By its people. Oh, wow. Interesting. So, um, what but that, she said, don't look for that tomorrow. Oh God, no. Well, so what, what's the, the, the main thing that were overall caused the downfall the, 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 the people rising up is so how they're protected from, inf from the information in the world so mm -hmm. much. She said it, it isn't about the human world, she says, it's about somebody getting an idea given to them just from the divine, oh. pulling on the idea, going underground, looking at it. There is already something in the work, she said, Good. with an outside source helping somebody's in China already to make this move. You talking about outside like a, something divine from the divine? Both divine and so, and another uh, country close okay. to it. I not giving me that. But. Okay, yeah, no, we don't want to do that. Oh wow, so that'll be so good for the people. I mean, I I have a feeling that their economy is going to suffer if people start 
other countries start taking their supply chains back and stuff like that. So well, and she says that that will happen. She says, and it's sad because we all suffer as a collective. Then you know, it's really nobody. It's not a win-win in that way. Um, I'm trying to see if she would give me an idea of when the unrest. She's calling it an unrest would happen in China. Um, she says within the next 18 to 22 months. What? I thought years. Okay, okay, good. Well, at least it'll start, at least. Um, so, um, one more prediction? Just for picks. It could be fun. It doesn't have to be grand. It could be whatever you want. I want you to have fun here, too, Sylvia. It's funny because she says um, she got her start and her fame on TV with Montel Williams. Oh, yeah. The yeah Montel Williams show. You talked to him. Sorry, go ahead. Uh -huh. um, but she's saying that we are regressing from that. A prediction will be that the center of the home will once again be the radio. She's laughing and she says the podcast. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Okay. We are, while well, we are a visual, we are a visual nation, she says, we are busy and listening on the go, she says, you can see it already, but it's going to get even more prevalent and it's going to host families back together just like it was. Oh, thank God. I mean, we have already been doing that uh, a lot more and having time to self-reflect, et cetera. So, um, uh, what like tell me when you first know noticed that there was something that you had the sight i mean were you born with it she's saying um it's very clear to her she was about seven to eight years old okay and she's saying that she says to remind you that she had a grandmother oh and, I know. okay and i think she's saying an uncle that were psychic so this was very normal for her so when she started hearing things and seeing things she had a safe space to go well she was seven years old and she would actually see shadowy figures wow. she would actually hear um and have conversations and she's also saying she just knew things she always just knew things a lot of clear uh, um cognizance Mm -hmm. What about your yep. parents? Did they were they upset about it, or was who upset? You cut out your mother and father. She said no. She was very supported, but she also was saying the religion that she was raised in, um, it wasn't looked at favorably, oh, yeah. and therefore they didn't know what to do with her. Um, she says, if you haven't noticed, it was, would have been very difficult to keep me quiet. Oh yeah. All right. Good for you. Thank God. So, um, scalar energy, you know, Tesla kind of discovered that there's informational energy called scalar energy. It's basically from starlight. It's not, I don't think it's even on the electromagnetic spectrum. Is that the, the wavelength by which we, uh, can become, be psychics? And it's also... What, what is used in Reiki, although really on steroids, um, you know, when it's fully used. Uh, and it's also the energy of our thoughts, but is it also the energy f uh, behind channeling and seeing? She said that's a very uh, a simple way, she said, to put it. Um, or do you see it through a wormhole? Well, it's a I don't know. Right. While it's sophisticated, in and of itself, it is a very, that is a very simplistic way to say it. She says that there are, there are frequencies in different parts of our minds that are elevated and can reach higher frequencies. But what happens, she says, 
the, the reason people can't channel effectively is because of all the buzz, the noise inside of their own mind. Mm -hmm. So she says, yes, think of it this way. There is something in us, like a, a, a built-in frequency that when accessed connects as if it, as if it plugs into, into, and it can hear and it can feel it's the language of the soul. If you think of it like this, the body has its five senses and the soul has its five senses. And she's saying it figuratively. And so when the soul communicates and it's always plugged in directly, the soul will use its, we call it our six senses and beyond. So it's like we have this antenna and then we have to tune the radio to, to the right frequency, is that it? Sort of like yes, and she, she's saying that um, it needs to be respected and it needs to be practiced. Yeah. Even, even though she's saying to me to share with you about my experience, even though I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I know what I'm doing, I have to constantly be in communication with a power and a source bigger than I am. And she says to tell you, that's, that's because it's what fills me up. It's what, if you think about a generator and oh, yeah. how it's powered, the filling me up, the sitting in silence, the sitting in nature, the being of love, is what really, um, we, we know it, she says, people will know it has raised their vibration. Oh yeah, and yeah. So your antenna can pick up that soul language. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So tell me about the transition. What was that like? Were there any big surprises? <laughs> she says, yeah, that I went. <laughs> She's <laughs> laughing. Uh, uh, you know, she says that she knew, I guess she, what I'm hearing her say is she made a prediction about her own death that didn't come oh. true. She's okay. saying that to me. Okay. Um, well, maybe it's just an, one exit point of many. Well, that's what she wants to clarify. She had three exit points um, and she, <laughs> she says, I thought I could use my free will to, to use the later, the latest exit point. She says that's human ego, um, but obviously there were other plans. She's also saying one of her exit points were when she was a child, there was a mishap or some sort of um, uh, accident, but not a, I don't know what she's saying. I mean, she called it a mishap okay. when she was a child, okay. probably like about okay. three, three okay. or four years old and that didn't happen mm -hmm. so you crossed over what did you see How, tell me about let's share the the experience of transition for you she says it was euphoric it was the white light it was A going home, she says that's a phrase that people use a lot, but she says like this, everybody I knew on earth was there. So the transition was as simple as me walking from, from one room to the other. Okay, so people so are not dead though, right? Like I, yeah. Okay. It's not like I understood that I left. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. Wait, did yeah. you, were, the, were living people there too with you? No. Oh, okay. No. Was there anything you missed? But it, oh, go ahead. Um, no, I don't miss anything. How could I miss anything? We don't miss anything. She says, because we have everything. 
Oh yeah. Did you want to finish about your transition? I, I think I cut you off. I didn't I thought we were um, She says that people are obsessed with death and they want to know what happens, but she says it's very difficult to pinpoint for any one person what it will look like because she says, think of it like this. Everybody is unique in their life. Every soul has its unique path and how one person crosses, another person might not. One thing for sure, she says, and she's giving me this from all of the readings and mediumship work that she's done, mm -hmm. you don't transition into misery. Oh. It doesn't happen. Of course not. Okay, so, um... Someone writes that uh, in, she says, I'm re or he, I'm reading her book, uh, Exploring the Levels of Creation. Now that you're on the other side, is what you said, what you wrote about these levels accurate? You think? She says, yes. She says, I, ha I had the vision. I was given the vision, correction, and Yes, the levels were as I saw them, but again, tweaking it to be the experience of the individual. So what one perceives, another one may not, but I experienced what I saw in my book. Okay, now, um there's another one. Sylvia, when you were in human form, you always said that the only free will that we have was before we incarnated. But once we're in human form, our lives were predestined to the second. You still believe that's true? I, I don't know if that's true what you said. No, she says clearly, she says clearly no. Oh, okay, that's no. it. Somebody wants to know, why did you charge 1,200 bucks for a 20 minute reading? Was it like a business for you? And how did that go all over in your life review? Don't she the messenger? She says, yes, it was a business. It's how I earned my living. Yeah. And, and she's quite frank when she says, why, why did I charge it? What now? Because people would pay it. Yeah, I mean. People would pay money. it. Yeah. She got, but actually I want to say, she got very almost like standoffish when she said people would pay. So I need to understand what's going on with that energy. Yeah. She says um, that was ego. Okay. All right. So how did it go over in your life review? Was it a problem or not? No. She says, no, it just, <laughs> she says, it just put me in a different line to learn different things to evolve differently had I been somebody walking around giving the show away she says oh, I see what well, did you do anything charitable she says that she had her charities that she gave to um, children's funds okay she said what well, and you asked one of the regrets if she had any re regrets Oh, was well, going to. So she saw that coming. She, yeah, she saw that coming. <laughs> um, she said she regrets that she wasn't more, it wasn't more notable or th about her, her charitable side. She wishes that she would have been more public with that. Yeah. She yeah. thought that that would look more egotistical. Look what I've done. Look what I can oh, do. Oh, okay. She had it backwards. That makes, yeah. Uh, but it is a problem for mediums. Why do you have to charge it all? You know, I mean, it's kind of silly. People have to put a roof over their head. Okay, but anyway, so is the other side exactly what you expected? She said it's even better than I expected. She said there isn't anything here that you don't have. She said anything you want is it appears. She said, but let me clarify what you want and what you desire once you're here is much different than when you were on earth. 
I see. All right, boy, people are so hard on you. Here's another one. Um, Sylvia's uh, thoughts on her prediction to the parents of a young man who had been kidnapped. Sylvia told them he was dead, but he was in fact alive and eventually was rescued and returned home. Maybe you were seeing a different exit point for him, you know, or what happened? She says this was a girl, not a him. Oh, okay. Um, she said, I, I stand by what I saw. I know that people cast stones and hate at me. But the truth is, I saw it going the other way. I can't change what I saw. Okay. Oh, here, this is another person. On Montel Williams' national TV show with millions watching, the mother of missing uh, person, Amanda Berry, asked you if her daughter would be found, and you taught, t told her she was dead, Amanda Berry. But she was ca held captive for 10 years and was found alive. Why did you tell her that her daughter was dead? How did you get it so wrong? She said, I, I was wrong, she said, but what I was reading was the spirit and the energy of the individual. And there was a resignation and a giving up and a release oh. of any hope. Okay, so that and was that a was a miscommunication dead. on my part. Okay, so yes. Barry was pretty spiritually dead. Yes, she said, another regret, she regrets not handling that better publicly. Okay. She thought that the apology that she issued was enough, but clearly she was in ego, yeah. and it was about her being right. Well, you're not the only one who makes mistakes around here, girl. Don't you think you have a uh, total, uh, that lock, stock, and barrel? All right, so let's talk about what was your spiritual mission as Sylvia Brown in, in this past incarnation? Mm -hmm. Actually, the first word she said to me was to learn to be humble. I don't know if she quite got that one, <laughs> um, but to be humble. Um, and she said to, to help people appreciate and understand that there's more to this physical world well, thank than you. we know. We all think. Okay, so uh, I love you. I'm almost finished. I love you. No, okay. Is your what do you okay? What were you here to learn, and what were you here? Well, to learn humility. But, so, what were you here to teach? Mm -hmm. Um, she says acceptance Ooh. and differences. She was very different. She says she never fit in. And she was, it's funny because I can still see, and I don't really know her, like I didn't know her work per se, mm -hmm. but I do remember shots of Montel and she's got these long ass nails really? and she still has them. Like they're very long and she has very pronounced lips I can see. I've never seen um, her. I'll have to look her up after this. And, she, and she, the nails, I think, were her signature because she's showing her nails. Um, and I lost track of the question. I'm sorry. No, you did it. Fine. What was she here to teach? And that's acceptance. Well, um, you said you didn't fit in. Did you take that as a good thing or did you take it? As, was it hard on you? Were you like, hey, I'm different, yo? Or were you like, oh, shit, I can't fit she in? Can't she embraced the difference. She embraced the sensationalism. She embraced the drama. And she's going to go down a path here really quick, she says, because, and she didn't know this until she crossed over, she was seeking her whole life to be noticed and to have attention. Oh, okay. Let's segue into that. Tell me, can you share with us another life 
that most influenced your life as Sylvia Brown? Because maybe it was one where you went unnoticed. She's all, all she's talking about is her being at the temple okay. and being a peasant okay. and, um, and, and having water uh, buckets with her. And she was in charge of cleaning up. And I think what she's getting at is no one really noticed her in that life. Yeah. But she's saying, I had more than that. She said, I had multiple lives where nobody noticed me. And so this life that I lived with you all, I came out very sensational. I came out of the proverbial closet in a big dramatic way. And she says now, she knows, and this is big. She says, tell them to prepare themselves. Uh oh. I got too big for my britches. That's okay. But why did you have so many lives where you went under the radar so much? She Was said, me, a little I'm humility, or I mean, I. Yeah, that's a hard lesson to learn for any of us, I would think. Oh, but God, yeah. she says it just, you know, based on choices made, you know, one life plays on the other. And so it just was the simultaneous. Um, she lived one life uh, in Egypt, one life in Jerusalem, Ooh. one life in um, South Africa. Okay. Did you have any lives that you really liked? She says, I like the life that I lived with you all. She said, I thought it was great. All right. Now, um, of course, you, that's true. Um, humility is hard. So it's letting go, learning to forgive and surrender. But uh, you also said, somebody says, you taught that people come to earth with specific life themes and that patience is one of the hardest. How can a person tell if they have mastered the patience life thing? Well, I have not. Okay. I scratched me off that list. Well, she says, uh, same. She said she didn't master it either. She's saying she could be a hard ass and she could be demanding and she wanted when she, what she wanted. She wanted what she wanted when she wanted it. So she said, I'm probably not the expert on patience. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, t can you tell us, I think I'm, I'll, I'll stop after this uh, question because I think we're just going to have to have a part two. Um, can you tell us what you do there on the other side? <laughs> she says, I'm still the know-it-all and she's chuckling. She says not in a, in a dramatic sense. Right. She said, um, she's actually training people to develop their inner knowing. People here on earth. Mm -hmm. She's working with like, she says you can call it a spirit guide. Uh, she says she in 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 ingests her energy. What's the word? Is she, I can't hear the word. Ingests her energy. I think. Okay. In, in injects her energy. Okay. Sorry, ingest injects her energy into others, and she guides and leads them. But she says she's still mastering her own downfall, her own faults, her own ego. Okay. Well, yeah, of course. So are, do you have any final messages for us? She says that one thing she wants to leave everybody with is that no matter what it is that you feel makes you different, just know that that difference is what will make a difference in the overall collective. She said, embrace your difference. Exactly. And also Good she process. says, yeah. find find your signature self she says know the self that you're proud of that you want to show the world and she's going very quickly behind the scenes here she said i wasn't always in alignment and that was a sadness for me i would go on and i would be this confident outspoken medium and I could do it like nobody's business but behind the scenes I could often be sharp and cutting and mean and hurtful but that was because I didn't have the confidence and she says I didn't know that on earth 
Well, did you suffer from depression? Or so that, that's one of the things she's learned since she broke. She did. She says yes. She said she would disconnect. She would unplug. Um, she would revert. She would retreat. Why? Only her closest people knew that. Oh, why? I couldn't why? handle it. Why did you suffer from from that? Because I couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle the the fame. Did you feel like you weren't worth all that fame? She said, that the light or what? What's going on? She says that she knew you always know when you're living out of alignment. And the more famous she got, the more out of alignment she became. And therefore, it manifests in depression. Yeah, that's what Eric says, that the four roommates have to be a lot in alignment, the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. Mm -hmm. And that is when, push, you are your true, authentic self. And that is so freaking hard, I'm here to tell you, because one out of alignment will affect the other, and so on, so. Um, it's like physical out of mm -hmm. alignment, then you can get depressed, it's mental. I mean, ugh, what a mess. What a mess, huh? Uh, is there anything you want to uh, talk about before we uh, close? Eric, you want to ask any questions or Veronica? Uh, it, um, I'm just fascinated with the fact that she's so willing to be transparent and to teach those of us that can connect to her or choose to connect to her um, about humility. Because I think in doing that, even though she's on the other side, I think she can check that off her list. Yeah, I mean, I of course, I think that being honest, emotionally okay. honest with herself on that side, it, it must help her evolve in that sense. And it certainly shows a lot of courage, so I wanna thank you for that. Everybody go out and buy her book. She says, thank you. Oh wait, is your son a legit medium? Are you there? Uh, oh, yes. Oh, oh, good, good, good. All right, you guys, I'm going to close off now. I love you, Eric. I love you, Veronica. Thank you so much, Sylvia. We'll talk again. And you guys check out Veronica Drake at veronicadrake.com, which I'll put right here. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. I love you guys.